What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life. Welcome back to the Budget Bush Plane Chinook build. Today, we are finally off of controls and on to engine systems. Stay tuned. So I think the first thing we're going to do today is radiator modification. I've taken the stock radiator, this is the radiator that was in use with the 582, I put it back onto its mount and taken a look at where we've got things. Now, here is our upper radiator um, inlet right here. Here's our outlet. Now, I could debatably make some snaking hoses and stuff to get this right, but you know what? We have a welder, let's use it. Uh, this guy repositioned onto this face and pointed right over here. Actually, the thing's rotated a little bit if I hold it right there. Can give us a perfectly straight shot where we can use just a straight piece of tubing off of here and connect it over to the water neck. That's gonna be perfect. The level is surprisingly, if I account for this here, just about, I mean, we can get a straight shot of it there and you can see radiators here, that's there, almost perfect. So why make this any harder on the rubber than it needs to be? Let's go ahead and redo our aluminum a little bit down here. Uh, we'll work on that guy first, get that a straight shot and then work on the next hoses. Right, so what we have done is take this guy, which was the outlet up here, cut it off. Nice piece, no reason not to reuse it. We've drilled a new hole and put a line on here, and we are going to re-weld that guy on like that, which is gonna give us a straight shot for our piece of straight tubing to come in over here. Uh, I think that's gonna work real well. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to block this off with just a, a piece of flat patch, that's fine. So let's go ahead and pull this off of here, uh, get over to the welding bench and weld this guy in. And that's a little more like it. We've plugged up our top here. Um, this actually used to be blocked, I think, so I'm noticing that there is an empty well bead. I may throw this back on the bench before I'm done and just finish this guy out just for cosmetics and just clean up welding a little bit. Uh, that is all done. I've taken a piece of, actually, a cut down piece of the old uh, hoses that were, because the old hoses are very nice material off of the 582, so we went ahead and borrowed some of that and I've connected the water neck over to the radiator. Now the next thing is on the other side, come around here, this exit needs to make a U-turn down under here, back under and get down to that other radiator outlet inlet there. So I have a pretty good idea. I think this, because this area in here has a bar and it's actually gonna be closed in. I'm gonna have a um, uh, my surge fuel tank down here. So I don't wanna go through there. So I think we're gonna make a turn and go up and then over. Uh, Subject to change, but I'm gonna bring some more hose bends out and start playing with that and see where we get. So I spent the past maybe 30 minutes or so just kind of studying oil tank locations. And upon review, I think that we can actually get this Apex oil tank mounted in here to where it doesn't stick out very far. And also, it's easy to forget, but this is underneath the wing. 
So the wings up here, so this thing really can't be seen. Um, yeah, it's hanging out in the airstream, but so is our exhaust right behind it. So I don't really see that as a huge issue. Uh, I think this is gonna work. We're gonna do some modifications though. I've kind of marked out a little section that's interfering with one of our motor mount tubes. I think we'll go ahead and start cutting on this until this guy sucks in real nice. And then I'll just uh, patch in some aluminum on the backside here to close this back up again. Uh, so obviously, so it does not leak. I actually have pictures of the inside of one of these cut open. So I know that I can get away with this. There's nothing important in it there, it's just empty tank at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just start cutting on this guy till it sucks in and fits real nice. Uh, then we'll figure out some uh, mounting bracketry to hold the whole thing and weld it all together. So yesterday, we got the oil tank cut out to put on the airplane. We figured out that this was gonna fit, but that this needed to have a little guy uh, taken out of it. Went ahead and made this little sheet metal piece patch to fit in here that's going to kind of create a dip in this corner. But in the process of doing this, we created a ton of metal dust that went down in here. Thankfully, it's aluminum, not steel or something sharper, but still not anything we want in the engine. Uh, I tried to clean this out as best I could, but it's sort of difficult to clean because you've got a little bit of the top here you can get into, a little bit of the bottom in this hole, but otherwise it's a sealed tank. It's not like I can open this up and really clean it. So I went down to my local automotive um, uh, repair shop that had a parts cleaner and got them to parts wash this. Uh, that got most everything out of here. I can kind of feel in here and you know, my hand comes out pretty clean. Not really anything on there and certainly nothing sharp. So that makes me feel pretty good about it. I followed that up with just some more washing in the sink with soap, uh, just to flush anything that could possibly be in here out of it. At this point, I'm comfortable that it is indeed clean. So we're gonna go ahead and take our aluminum patch, get that guy on here, get the TIG over here, and weld this guy back shut so that we can go head back over to the airplane and get it mounted. and that's all welded up. That's not what I'd refer to as my prettiest welding, but this was actually a remarkably difficult little guy to get in here. A lot of gaps to fill up because my metal working wasn't absolutely perfect. Dissimilar metal thicknesses and old dirty metal. Uh, all things considered for aluminum, I'm happy with it. Aluminum's hard, so I'll take it. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead, I've already been playing around with position a minute ago. I'm gonna go get this on the airplane and figure out where our mounting tabs are going to fall and how I'm gonna build those so that I can build some bracketry on the plane and we can get this actually attached on here so we can start working on plumbing it. All right, so full disclosure time, time to fix one of my screw ups. We just put this time into cutting this apart and cleaning this tank and having it clean, spending money to have that done, all to mount the tank up here. Well, as my father just pointed out, because I didn't even think about this, the wing is right here, which means all of our ports are gonna be blocked, which also brought us to a discussion of oil tank level, and I realized I've really got this too high. It really needs to be down much lower on to where the uh, output for the tank is on a level with the uh, this hose here, which I've just hooked up temporarily to take the oil out of the tank and into the engine. So, screw ups all around, but I think we can fix this. I've done a marker mark on here, which you can now see for the top section. I've also marked where the stock dipstick full and empty is, so that's kind of our oil level down here. My thinking is we can take some of our air space out of here. It is going to reduce our capacity slightly. If I was really worried about that, I could extend it out the other side over here, but I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. That's gonna allow us to mount our tank lower, kind of like so, but scoot it in up against this bar closer in 
this pocket I'm gonna create. So we're going to cautiously cut that section out of the tank, open this guy wide open, uh, and then we'll start slowly, I'll, I'll start with a small cut and then slowly open it up to bring the tank in towards the motor mount until I have it situated just where I want it. And then we're gonna take some more aluminum, even more aluminum, and weld this guy back shut again with a new notch in it. So basically a bigger version of what we did below, which is now completely pointless. So, whoops, this sort of thing happens. Time to just uh, pick up where we left off and keep going. So try two, let me get this in the light, try two. We have opened this guy way up this time. We're gonna put this much lower and the main tube is actually gonna go through here. So we got a little chunk of aluminum that's gonna go in there. Uh, I'm gonna actually get this partially welded in place and then kind of hammer this bend over right here uh, to cover that up, but I wanna get some weld on it first. Um, so, this guy's gonna go in here and seal this up and uh, we'll get back on the airplane to see if Tri-2 fits. Here we have the fruits of my labor. That took a while and was a real pain in the butt. This is some dirty aluminum, which should be expected. It's an oil tank. It held oil for its entire life. Uh, and it's not the nicest aluminum to start with. So welding on it was not exactly pleasant, but we got it done. Um, again, it's not my prettiest work, but it's very functional. And now this guy can go down lower, kind of like so. Uh, which I think is gonna be way better because now we have dipstick access, oil access, the hoses flow better. Everything about this is an improvement. Uh, the, in, in hindsight, it probably could have lived up here from a head pressure standpoint, but the access to the wing was definitely gonna force it down here. I got some parts in for the radiator system, so I decided I'd jump back over and finish off something. I realized we moved this outlet, inlet, whatever it is here, from the top over here and I plugged this off. Now, what I realized afterwards is, you know what? That actually would have been a perfect place, it will be a perfect place for this, which is our radiator cap mount. So we need to put a radiator cap, pressure cap on here somewhere, this is a perfect spot. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and grind this uh, patch we did here, take all of our hard work back out again, uh, clean this guy up and then we'll drop that down and weld him in place on the top and then we'll have a nice radiator cap over here and no spare holes on this which will be perfect so let's get down to it much nicer. Now we don't have a patch on top, we have our radiator cap, or the uh, radiator cap receptacle. So we'll drop the cap on top of this, it's still cooling off, It's you can't tell but it's blazing hot, I can't even touch that yet. So we're gonna let this guy cool off in the clamp for a minute and then I think I'll take it back over to the airplane and uh, get a cap on it and then we can start looking at radiator hoses.
yesterday, we got this piece made. Uh, fits in there nice, but I'm not quite done with it. Had to run out before I was absolutely finished. Uh, today, I'm going to put a little gusset in here just to support the, um, uh, the, the angle so that we don't get a crack later on here. And then I need to look at putting some mounting tabs on this side of the radiator to hold this thing so that it's nice and secure in place. So with our uh, little gusset in here to strengthen things, I decided to go ahead and hook everything up. So I've actually got hose clamps now in place just to uh, tie our coolant the whole way across and over to the um, uh, thermostat housing. Uh, I did decide actually against putting a rigid mount along here for the pipe, I decided, you know what, I'd rather have some movement in this. I don't want to stress this guy and form cracks in any way. Um, there is a proximity to one of the motor mount tubes here, so we'll probably do a little loose, maybe like a double zip tie with a rubber standoff or uh, something along those lines, something secure but, uh, but flexible to attach this here to where it can't rub on and uh, bounce off of that guy. So we'll do something, but otherwise I'm gonna let it hang loose just so that it can flex and move as it needs to. And that's as good a place to end as any. Now, you may have noticed on the past few videos I've not done a financial breakdown of where we're at. There's a reason for that. I have had to push the financial breakdowns off to the end. Unfortunately, trying to reconcile where the project's at versus months later when I'm actually recording these intros and outros and editing the videos is proving basically impossible. So instead of doing that, we're just gonna break everything down at the end of the project, which is coming up for me relatively soon in video time, probably a month or two for you guys. I may scoot some of these videos together closer as we get towards the end of things and I'm no longer actually working on planes. I can focus on video editing. In any case, we've got a bunch more coming, so stay tuned for that next time. See you then.